It's officially March and at our house that means it's time to break out the St. Patrick's Day decorations. So today we're going to do some DIYs, we're going to do some decor tips and tricks, and I'm going to show you how you can add some greens and some rainbows into your everyday decor to help brighten up your space for spring. We're gonna kick things off with this fast and easy project to make these shamrock branches. Now they might look familiar because I did some for Valentine's Day and a lot of you said that you did them too. So here's a way you can repurpose those branches so you don't have to store them for next year. I started by removing all of those heart stickers from the branches because they were just stuck on, not hot glued. And if you don't have branches like this, you could easily just grab some from the craft store or outside if you've got a yard. And then I grabbed a variety of felt scraps in different green colors so that I could cut out some shamrocks. To do that, I took some heart pieces from those stickers and I put three of them together to trace a shape. You can also freehand it or you can print out a shamrock and then cut a stencil so that you can trace it onto your felt. Or if you've got a Cricut, you can do that too. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I cut a bunch of them by hand in groups of two so I could glue them on and sandwich them onto my different branches. And I also took some of the scraps that I had and cut circles as well as rectangles so that I could put them on kind of like buds on the different offshoots of the branches. So I continued to trace and cut until I had as many as I thought I was gonna need. And then it was as simple as adding some hot glue, gluing the branch down and then sandwiching the other shamrock on the other side. Then I just grabbed this directly from my kitchen. This is a picture I got from Aldi on clearance and some Walmart eucalyptus, and I just added my branches right into the picture. Quick and easy, nothing extra needed. And this is fun and festive, but also understated and classy, which I really like. Sometimes holidays like this can get a little hokey, so I try to have fun, but have it not be cheesy or tacky as much as I can help it. Now, I decided to take my tin snips, which I use for everything, and cut the branches down to put them in this black pot I recently got from Walmart in their garden section. It gave me the kind of leprechaun pot of gold vibes without it having to be over the top. So I stuck those in there, good to go, and this vignette is perfect for a little touch of St. Patrick's Day. Something else I love to do to add some whimsy, fun, festive color without having a lot to store afterwards is making things like this wreath hanger. So it started with this Dollar Tree unfinished shamrock and a lot of different stores have these. I just found them at Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the hanger so I don't get paint on it. We're gonna start with a dark green coating of the back of it because I don't want the 3D shapes and let that dry. Then you're either gonna grab a lighter green or mix some white paint with your original green and we're gonna create some polka dots. So I'm taking a flat edge paintbrush and I'm making some circles about the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit bigger between a quarter and a half dollar. And I am going to use my wrist to kind of swish it around and make a nice circle. Once I'm done with that one, then I'm going to move my way around my shamrock and I'm also creating some that hang off the side. It's just going to add to the overall whimsy look. Once that's all dry, we're going to take a white paint marker and these are my favorites from Amazon. I will link them down below. I love them and they work really well. And then I'm going to take some kind of chopped up lines and outline the entire thing. This is where it really sings and it starts to look fun and whimsy. Now to that highlight, I'm taking a black marker to add a little bit of contour just randomly along the outside, just kind of anywhere I see an opening. Add the hanger back and this thing is good to go. I love this whimsy painting style. I did a carrot for Easter last year. I also did some fireworks and it's a quick and easy thing to apply to whatever wood cut out and just to add some depth. You could also easily add a Cricut decal or hand letter if you want. Now here's a fun way to style it inside your house. On my blanket ladder, I'm taking a green blanket that I already had from Christmas and I'm gonna drape it over so I don't have to have anything else. Then I am taking this chunky knit infinity scarf and using it as a faux blanket. So once you put it over and tuck it behind, it looks like you bought a really expensive blanket for your ladder. And I got that for a couple bucks at my thrift store. Then I'm grabbing some of these metal garden hooks from the plant garden section at Dollar Tree and you get two for $1.25. Hook it on your rung, add a wreath. This one is a cypress wreath I already had. And then I'm hanging my little shamrock on there and bada bing, bada boom, all done. So I'm just repurposing things from Christmas in my house. You can also probably find some green things in Easter or winter decor. And if you have a lamb's ear wreath, that would work great too. Boxwood, just really anything in that color palette as well as the creams. And I love how fun and classy it looks. 
Now, because it's already March, if you are on a time crunch, just grab a sign that you don't have to DIY like this one from Dollar Tree. Same price, $1.25, no glitter, hallelujah. Just hang it right on top of that wreath and you've got a fun, festive little pop of rainbow. Another fun variation for a wreath sign is using these Dollar Tree wood rounds. I stock up on these every time I see them because they come in and out of stock. You can also get them in a small quantity on DollarTree.com. So if you can't find them in your store, I will link down below how you can order them and have them shipped to your store so you can craft along with me. So to stain it, I just used a baby wipe as well as some antique wax from Waverly. That dried so much quicker than stain so that I could pop my painter's tape right on the center and paint the bottom green. I put my painter's tape six inches up from the bottom so that it would align with my decal I cut out. So this one is a leopard print with some shamrocks inside, which I love. Both of these files are free over on my blog and these are really quick and easy to cut out. I sized the black one on some matte vinyl and this is six inches tall. It will come in the half circle format. And then I did my shamrocks and shenanigans saying 10 inches wide. Once both of those were weeded out, we're grabbing our paper transfer tape. We're going to apply it onto the top and then that's going to go right onto our sign. Now this is actually the Amazon paper transfer tape I'm using here. I usually talk about Expressions Vinyl, but they, I'm not sure what's going on, but they're changing something because they're going in and out of stock. So I wanted to test out this Amazon one and it works very similar. It was a little bit stickier, so I had to use a little bit more force here, but it was really similar and it's not going to rip up your stuff. So if you haven't been able to get the Expressions Vinyl one, check this out down below from Amazon. It's on Prime. Then you can reuse that paper for the shamrocks and shenanigans right on top. And then we're going to finish it off with a bow. So I took some ribbon from my stash, black and white stripe, as well as some burlap Dollar Tree ribbon and some green check from Dollar Tree. You can use whatever you're feeling. I'm folding them in half and cutting them at an angle to get that little scallop at the end. And then I'm going to lay all of the pieces kind of in an X shape with the green intermixed, tie the center with a triple knot of jute twine, and then we're going to fluff it and take the burlap ends of that bow and staple it onto the sign. Now, because this is thin from Dollar Tree, I'm just using a regular office staple from my office desk and the stapler is just my office stapler too. So nothing crazy. The bow's not heavy. It will stay. Then in my house, I have got it arranged on top of this lamb's ear wreath in a tobacco basket. Both of those are from Hobby Lobby. I finally broke it out of the box from our old house. It used to be on our gallery wall. And this looks so pretty. I love the little shamrock pieces inside the leopard print. I can add this to my collection for fall, winter. I've got the Valentine's Day one, so we'll keep it going. You'll have to let me know if I should do some for summer. You could also hang things like that on your front door. And if you are too busy to DIY, grab one of these Happy St. Patrick's Day signs from Hobby Lobby. They fit perfectly inside of a wreath and their stuff is 40% off right now. I added my everyday wreath that's always on my front door, hung up the sign. And then to finish off the look, I added this fun rainbow front door mat that I found at Aldi. I love that aisle of just random stuff at Aldi. Leave me a comment if you do too, because it is literally one of my favorite places to shop when I go grocery shopping, because I love that aisle. <laughs> Here's how everything came together, and it's so fun and welcoming for spring. Another seasonal hack that I love to do are my printables. You guys know that. If you're new to my channel and don't know my love of free printables, well, you do now. I've got a pack of 25 St. Patrick's Day ones, and I get a lot of questions on how I print them. I print them on white cardstock. I just get at Michael's, and then this is my everyday desk printer that is under 100 bucks, and I got it at Target. And it prints not the best quality, but it prints great enough for the printables. Now I've got sets that will go together. You can print them as individuals, a lot of different options, but you could easily pop these into a frame you already have and not have to do a ton of work, but have your house feel fun and festive. And I love seeing what you guys do with my printables. So make sure you tag me if you use them. I personally decided to print out this fun clover overhang design to go up on my floating shelf that we recently built in our front entryway. And I also had to, absolutely had to do this whiskey business one because just a play on all the things St. Patrick's Day and whiskey and wit. 
I am so thankful that you guys are along for the ride for all these DIY projects. And so many of you asked me to do St. Patrick's Day this year, so here we are, year number two. So if you see stuff in this video that you like, but I don't show the DIY, it's gonna be in last year's video, and I will link that right at the top of the description box for you. And if you're not already a craft buddy, no worries, just hit subscribe down below before you leave today, and then you can DIY along with us. I'm sure you guys snuck a peek of this lovely rainbow and pot of gold on the shelf. So let me show you how I made it. It started with a Dollar Tree sign that looks like this. And I originally wanted to remove the hanger as well as the lucky portion because I didn't want the wording on there. Well, after trying to remove it with my heat gun, it was kind of a pain. So instead, I decided to slide my large weeding tool in between the gold piece and the pot itself. And after I got it in there, it was easy to just pop it apart. So you can use anything thin like that to get up underneath. The glue came off really easily and any extra bits I just went ahead and sanded down. I painted the entire thing with black chalk paint and then I did the top obviously in some gold metallic and then I wanted to try this painting technique I saw Tracy do at Country Charm by Tracy. She did it to a carrot that I sent her for the mystery box recently and she took a fan brush and created this faux buffalo check so I knew I had to try it so I was messaging her as I was doing this saying like I know it doesn't look like yours but you inspired me which is so fun to get inspiration from your friends here on YouTube. Also if you haven't checked out Tracy be sure to do so because she is inching closer to 100,000 subscribers that is a huge milestone for us on YouTube so if you like this style of painting be sure to go check it out. Now, after I got my horizontal and vertical lines with the fan brush, I went through with that white paint marker and added some lines. It's more of an art, not a science. I just did some, you know, staccato lines, traced the outside, and wherever I saw an opening that I thought needed it, I did that. Then we're going to take a paintbrush with just a little bit of white acrylic paint on it, and I am just hitting it with the paint marker. Very official process. But that's what Tracy did. It added some splatter, and I loved it. And so I added some additional kind of details on my pot of gold piece. And then I also did the tapping with some black paint to get some black flecks on the gold so it all kind of matched. And then I just hooked it back together with some Dollar Tree gel super glue so that I had my pot of gold that looked very St. Patrick's y and my gold on top. Now to go with my pot of gold, I wanted to make a large rainbow. So this one to the right I made last year, and it's the Mondo Llama brand in the craft section at Target. They have great unfinished wood pieces. So I grabbed this one for $10 and decided to paint a large version of it. So I just grabbed my acrylic paint and worked my way through. I painted all of the inset colors first, and I did a quick little pencil mark at the bottom so I knew what color went where, because you can get going and paint the wrong thing, and then you're like, oh, it's not the right color. So then I went back through with the raised pieces, painted all of those, and then it was ready to go. It's not perfect. It kind of is hard unless you're going to spend like hours being meticulous, but I did the best I could and I think it turned out really, really cute. So I just stuck it up on the shelf, leaned my little pot of gold in front of it, and then that way I can just store the pot of gold until next year once St. Patrick's Day is over, and I'm going to use the fun rainbow in my craft room to add some color. So that doesn't have to get stored, and it is a quick and easy process. Thank you so much to Tracy for inspiring me with this painting technique. It was so fun. So here's the full view of that entryway in our house. So you kind of come into this half wall because we've got a bathroom behind there. And so I decorated my little table with my Whiskey Business printable, a half garland from Hobby Lobby, as well as that rainbow. And then I did this malarkey sign, which is in last year's video. And then to add some texture and greenery, I used some of this Walmart eucalyptus that I got in their floral section, as well as some of these picks from Hobby Lobby that I got for Valentine's Day with red and white, and so I thought the green and white would be really pretty. This little shamrock is from Dollar Tree, and this is a great deal because they usually sell them for more money at Hobby Lobby, but I found them at Dollar Tree this year, and that rounded out that little setup. Now, I was really excited when I was recently at Walmart because originally I was going to find green fabric, couldn't find what I wanted, but then I turned around and looked at the remnant section, and in the bottom was this four yards of this thick fabric for $6. So I don't know if they'll have it at all the stores, but I wanted to tell you to definitely look there because then I was going to use this for a really cheap decoration. So again, remind you, this whole thing was six bucks for this piece of fabric, and I chopped up about a two foot like 24 inch wide piece and this is doubled up so once I cut the 24 inch piece I cut the doubled up piece in half so it was just one layer 
and I'm just gonna put this over the bench in my dining room. This looks like a green blanket that I would have bought for St. Patrick's Day, but I just used the fabric. It A is way easier to display, way easier to store, and I like that it is thinner. I added some pillows over the top here and to create the matching pillow cover, it was a really quick and easy process with that extra fabric. I just cut a rectangle. I laid my pillow down in the center. This is an 18 by 18 pillow insert. I took my two edges, folded them in kind of like an envelope, and then my outside pieces, as I'm tucking, I'm tying it in the center in a double knot. And you can either leave the tails out or tuck them in. And then you've got a cute little pillow that you can easily change out for each season. So in my dining room, like I said, I added one of those to my bench in there. And then I also have a Hearth and Hand by Magnolia bench in our front entryway to the left of that floating shelf I just showed you. It was nice to just add some of that fabric, a green pillow, and then one of my covered pillows and make it look fun and festive. That should be the theme of this video. I feel like I've said that a few times, but it is. It just is fun and festive. I finished off the area above the bench with my cardboard garland that I made last year. These store really well and they're so cheap to make. So check out that video if you want to see how that's made. And then a Hobby Lobby felt ball garland. For my dining room table, I was really excited to find this Easter runner that is white and green. I thought this would be perfect for St. Patrick's Day and then it would transfer right into Easter. So I laid that out and then I added my dough bowl full of eucalyptus and lamb's ear right on top. I just switch out the elements in the bowl each season and it works really well. I grabbed two of these really pretty garlands that matched my little picks I got from Hobby Lobby and I just put them out and around the dough bowl and it added some texture to the table. Then for inside the dough bowl, I wanted to keep it very just neutral green, very classy. So I grabbed some Hobby Lobby shamrocks as well as some Dollar Tree ones. And I added some more of those picks to match the garland. I added in all of my little pieces around the center and then I needed a little bit more. So I added some of these really pretty white flowers. I'm covering up any holes that I see within the dough bowl. And this thing looks so classy, so high end. And it was really quick and easy to put together. You don't have to store the dough bowl, really you can use that for every season. So it's just these items that you can just throw in a small bin. And I love the texture of the greenery along with the garlands. And to finish off the table, I wanted to do a little tablescape. So I found these melamine plates at the Target dollar spot. They came in a two pack for $3, so $1.50 each. I added these large hand towels as napkins just to add some extra color, put the plate right on top, and then right on top, I added my cutlery holder that I made in the mystery box video that I just posted. So if you miss that and want to see how to make these, I will link it. I've got a full Cricut Design Space project, so you can just go ahead and cut and make it. They're quick and easy to put together, and I love this tablescape. And you could also admit those and just do the plates and napkins. Another really fun thing to do that isn't a ton of work for these kind of extra holidays is a tiered tray. And for mine this year, I wanted something that resembled green beer. So I took some toilet paper rolls and cut about eh, three quarters of an inch off the top. And then I cut some felt strips to the width of those cut toilet paper rolls. I used some hot glue to wrap it around the outside, make sure it was hooked down, and then I trimmed the extra. I did a ring of hot glue around the bottom of the toilet paper roll and stuck it on that scrap. So then that way it's gonna close off the bottom of your faux beer stein. I trimmed the bottom and then I went through and just hand drew a shamrock. And this is the easiest way for me to do it. Three hearts together. And I trimmed it with my little detail scissors. Then for the top, I was back and forth. on like, do I have a felt that looks like beer? I didn't. And I thought the green would meld in too much. So I decided to do white so it would pop, but you could do whatever you're feeling. I did the same kind of glue it down and then trim it. It's a lot easier than cutting a circle and trying to get it to fit perfectly. And then with a scrap piece of felt that matched my beer stein, I just took some hot glue and rolled it up to create my handle. I'm gonna add some hot glue to the side, kind of right by the seam, so that I can have my handle be hooked down. So then after I did that, I thought it needed a little something extra. So I took some scrap white felt and I cut some little squiggly pieces to look like the foam that you would see kind of coming over a glass of beer, more in like the commercials versus like in real life, cause you don't want this happening, but for decor, it's cute. 
Once I had that all added, it was a perfect addition to this little setup. I love it. I live outside of Chicago, and so St. Patrick's Day is really big here. There's parades and there's events and local bars do things. And so like having the green beer just is very much the vibe here. So I love how this looks in my tiered tray, and I wanted to take you through the process of how I arranged this, because a lot of you guys will ask, and I like to share tips and tricks there as well. So the tiered tray itself is from Amazon, and then I started by adding some big items I found in Muted Greens for Easter, actually, I believe, in the Walmart dollar section. They have had some really cute stuff when I've been in there, and so I grabbed this basket, as well as the striped mug and the green cup. Then from the Target dollar spot, I know it's kind of confusing, I got this rainbow handle mug. And then to add some texture, I went with these paper straws from Dollar Tree. They have four different colors and a pack for Easter. So I got three packs and decided that I would use the blue, pink, and purple for Easter and then pulled out the green for St. Patrick's Day. All of these signs were in last year's video. And then I wanted to do kind of an overflowing pot of gold. So I put it on my little wood riser. These are just scrap one by twos that I stain so I could lift things up because I've got the little lip. I'm adding a bunch of coins from Dollar Tree around it to cover up that wood piece and to make it look like, you know, you hit the end of the rainbow. Then I put a little bit of tissue paper or an old bag inside of that mug to raise up those little felt balls. And then here I'm just adding some rainbow elements as well as this beaded garland from Dollar Tree to really add texture and to make it look nice and full without anything like falling off. One of my last touches is my cute little beer stein as well as some additional little trinkety things, some extra beaded garlands, and this thing is good to go. This just brings me like so much joy. I don't do a ton of color in my decor except for seasonally, and usually it's like muted tones at that. So like this is like springtime, bring on the sunshine. I love it. So I'm hoping the weather takes note. Let me know down in the comments your favorite one and if you use the printables or the cut files or recreate any of these projects be sure to tag me in your posts on social media or you can also send them to hello at whiskeyandwet.com that'll get to me and i love to see what you guys create thanks so much for watching hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and i will catch you in the next one bye